This podcast is part of the Zeo to Hero Podcast Network. You stay right here. The world is very lucky to have you, and so am I. May the power protect you always. We heard the voices. We can hear them. We can touch them. We're going to find out who they really are. Well, now that's a terrible idea. I'm going to do that one more time because I felt like I sloshed it. Right now I'm an art teacher. I think it's very important for adults to connect with their childhood and remember what it was like being a child. I think that adults get caught up in like what's childish, what's maturity. I don't think there's a really a template for it. It's like, it's about what makes you happy and showing kids that like you are safe to be around. It's okay. Life gets better. And it's like, not everybody has that adult in their life that they can look to and be like, I want to be like this person when I grow up, or I want to be comfortable around this person. And it's, it, that's yeah. really important. And it's when, when I'm teaching, I try to be as open and available as possible to my students. And main, the first thing I tell them is like, yeah, dude, I still collect action figures. And that blows their mind because I'm an adult. And they're yeah, like, yeah. wait, Wait, Mr. DJ likes to play with, you know, Power Rangers and anime fairs. Like, I don't really play with them. I kind of just keep them on shelves. Some of them are still in the boxes. But yeah, no, dude, like, they're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you get posed like, real cool. Don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is, you know, like, some of them aren't that great. <laughs> so yeah. I wasted 20 bucks on this, but <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad spinning habit. All right, let me see. We got a we we're doing a 1.5, so let me try a different approach. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> Welcome again to this episode of Zero to Hero. We're on Billy, and that's Jim. And uh, I recently came across a bunch of old pictures of us, and I saw Jim's backstory of how he became the world title. Well, I wouldn't say world title right now. He's still working on it, but uh, the hide and seek champions. Jim, how did you feel seeing old pictures of yourself? Uh, I felt I felt uh, I felt distrusted you by sharing that, and uh, they should be scrubbed for the internet. And uh, you are a monster, sir. Um, <laughs> I did show Liz, and she was like, "Oh, you are so adorable." And I just I left. I was like, "No." I was going to show this. the one with you in the little wheelchair thing, but nobody wants. We can't share that you are disabled. I guess at some point. Never. That never. you can never see the light of day. Never. No. Mm. Okay. No well, one can ever know. Well, Jim, uh, tonight's gonna be a fun episode. We have a new voice with us tonight. We met. I met him on TikTok over his B fighter figures, and then it intrigued me so much. I followed him, and he has some of the best content for toy reviews and unboxings, and and his collection in general. So I wanted to welcome on our newest guest, hyped villain, and. I know hype villain. Uh, your real name is gonna be DJ. We'll we'll talk to you uh, as DJ, but everybody knows you as hype villain. I know I ask this question very often, but this one is very particular because it's in your name. But what's your origin story of your villain? Your villain origin story. Okay, do you want the the truth or do you want the BS thing that I tell everybody? Interpretive dance. All right, interpretive dance version. So. I used to party a lot when I was a kid, when I was like, you know, high school, college. So I used to get hyped. And, you know, oh. they always want to look at you like you're the villain. So oh. I was like, hyped villain. Oh. But the truth is, I'm just a big MF Doom fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm a dork. I love hip hop. I, uh, I always thought it'd be pretty cool to like emulate your heroes, but don't copy them. Okay, okay. Hey, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Well... As we bring you on tonight, we had a couple topics that we had. A t I would love to talk to you about because to get your your point of view on. Uh, but first, I know that we all collect, and every episode we tend to show off something that we've collected throughout the week. And uh, want to just say, well, we'll save yours for last because you have something cool. Uh, Jim, did you pick up anything new? I got one thing new. Oh, go on. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come here. Okay. Got Miwa. 
from JJK. Oh, yeah, okay. The only Funko I want from this set was her. Because oh. Oh, she was just a cool character. But, I saw uh, the yeah. robot today. The robot Funko. Uh, Conti? Conti, yeah, I saw him today. Yeah, Conti's fun. I, he's on my desk at the office. And so, oh. yeah. And then I got, like, this really fun, like, smart Hulk, like, little, like, thing. Uh, like, it's like a head. Uh, it's it's, it's right, a little right. bust. It's like a chibi bust. And so he's right. at my office, too. Oh, okay. You need to have to do something fun with it. I still got well, it in, the get... got still in the box. You got the box? In the box. But I got a uh, Guitaro with his Blood Demon art. Sickles. Nerd. <laughs> oh, it was an exclusive, so I had to pick that up as well. But I got uh, the Gundam Funkos coming in right now, and then oh, yeah? that's it. Mine wow. are in my pile of loot at Big Bad Toy Store. Okay. And I'm going to wait for like two more things to come in, and then I'm going to have them all shipping. What line in Gundam? Like, which uh, oh, oh, it's, it's literally the, uh, it's, arc... it's Gundam uh, 78, like the original Gundams. Yeah, it's like Gundam uh, 78 and original... Zaku. Yeah. yeah. But they're the, they're the, uh, uh, the four inch version, they're not small, they're the big ones, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah that's so. uh, that's pretty cool. I was, um, I was just wondering, like, maybe they'll do like you know how they do like the bigger, the slightly bigger Funkos, maybe like for like the endless waltz wing zero. Oh, that'd that'd be be cool. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. I, I don't think that. they were gonna do it, but that'd be so cool. I, like, I, if, if Funkos did SD Gundams like yeah, that would uh, that would definitely I would definitely they have would to buy fit. some of those. They would fit really they really fit well in the set. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, I would love that. Man, so uh, DJ, what did you pick up? Oh boy, I gotta go off screen really sec for a, for a quick second to come get it. <laughs> Why? Because there's a cat. <laughs> yeah, so I got this cat. <laughs> I, just if he if he appeared on camera, that'd be great. So I got two things that I wanted to share. One, I'm I'm pretty sure you all have seen on, on shelves if you're a Transformers collector. Um, I'm going to start off, try to do this reveal the fun way. We're not giving away the bigger surprise. Okay, so that's just one of my... So I got Megatronus. Oh. From, oh. Yeah. I, if I, I promised myself if I saw this guy in, in public, I'd pick him up. And I was like... The craziest impulse buy that I did recently, but I respect it. I understand. Uh, yeah. I was talking. Uh-huh. We were talking about um, Beast Wars and how I'm a big Beast Wars fan. But Hasbro released their uh, Transmetal Two Megatron not that long mm-hmm. ago. Oh. But I was <laughs> on AliExpress and I found an upgraded oh. bootleg version of it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this guy's oh, massive. That's ridiculous. He's so Dude, that's massive. Like- Things the size bigger, of... It's bigger than your head. <laughs> yeah, he barely fits it's on like camera. The... My God, um, he looks awesome, but he is not a good figure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's definitely it's, just, it's, it's definitely... just ones you can look at. Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely a great bootleg, though. I love it. Let me put this back really quick. Boy, that thing's amazing. I love it so Massive. much. Boy. Okay. Oh man, that's so awesome. Yeah, like I'm a big fan of bootlegs or third party um, Mm. transformers, but I don't. I think the company is called Black Mamba. (laughs) I have another one that's a little bit better. I got their uh, upscaled Tarn figure, and it's a really Mm. good figure. But like most bootlegs, like they, they, it's definitely um, they use diecast metal. Oh, and I don't know how I feel about third party, especially like bootleg, like China bootlegs, like using like diecast metal because they're cheaper. Like I, I spent like a hundred bucks on that Megatron, and oh, that wow. was like thirty. And I was like, yeah, this is great. There's two figures that I want, but their articulations, but like joints are but this like you know you got to get some of that magic glue to stiffen up joints and keep stuff together. Yeah. But, yeah, those are two. Those are the two coolest things that I've gotten recently. Damn, uh, I just can't Jesus. picture how you had to like step back to put the figure yeah. into the screen. <laughs> so my only question is: okay, uh, so you got it from Timu, right? Uh, so how, how long is the Timu shipping to you know where you're Not at? T- it's AliExpress. AliExpress. Well, how bad? Yeah. How bad is the uh, the shipping for you there? Not Over here it takes bad. forever. I, I I think it took me a week and a half to get it. 
Oh yeah, yeah it takes it's like three rare, months. It's, it's rare. Like I think I got this guy. I'm I'm going off screen because I'm touching my giant robot shelf. Um, I got the oh White Dino Ranger and Megazord. Yeah, I got this one. Uh, this one I got this from Japan actually through uh, what's the Dream O app or something. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. This took three months to get here. I am. Well, I've never had anything from Japan take that long to get to my house. I, I love this thing, but I broke it like the first day I got it. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, I, I imagine it'd be easy for you since you're like right on the port side of America, yeah. basically. For, uh, for uh, most, Asian it's stuff. funny. It's funny. Um, you would think the ports, especially since like Los Angeles and Tokyo are, are related, they're they're we're sister cities. Uh, right. To get to Japan, you have to go from California to Hawaii, to, then you get to Japan. So they literally hop, skip, jump. No, because everything goes from port to uh, on the East Coast. So everything ends up in Jersey. Uh, That's well, weird. wait, why? What? Every what? time I look at my tracking, it always says now have uh, has arrived at Port New Jersey. With you, you uh, got Port Los Angeles right there. That's that's a freaking port. I get stuff through I, all the time. I don't huh. get it. I don't like, get it. all my stuff comes from like Jersey or like uh, you know what, what is the other know? one like South Florida? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. I'm blaming. Yeah. I'm blaming. I don't know. The shipping industry here is kind of <laughs> crazy. I mean, I that's... blame Pete Buttigieg. He's the he's in charge of transportation right now, right? I don't know if that's oh, the same. No, no, <laughs> whole different thing. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a gentleman called the Joy. You should look up him up. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, that's, that's crazy yeah. though. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That, that's weird. But yeah, that's no, weird. it should be like you know, you guys are Port of Los Angeles right there. The customs in Los Angeles, and you guys should be fine. But whatever. That seems crazy. It's, like it's 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 interesting though because I don't know if it has something to do with like what market connects to what market and what what uh, contracts yeah. are right or had, but yeah, a lot of my the, stuff about order imports. Watch all the stuff you've been buying is from the uh, the far west side of China, and so it has to ship the other way around. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. It's, would. it's all next to Europe. <laughs> I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> Yeah, that probably I was like, yeah, that makes more. Oh, yeah, let's, let's ship it off towards Europe. So when it gets to the UK, you can just go to New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know, China has like everyone on the coastline, and then the whole middle section is like empty, and then the whole other side is not full up, but there's more people on that side. So that's where a lot of fact, not a lot of factories, but there are factories there and stuff. And then all, all on the uh, the west side. East side, east side, all the east side, mm -hmm. on the, the east coast is where mostly everyone lives at. Yeah, ha have you yeah, ever got sense. those? Y'all ever got those like scam text um, that says that the some of the U.S. Customs is holding your package for invalid address? Yeah, and they give like a little shady yeah. link. So I always yeah. text them back. I'm like, hold on, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been there twenty I got a minutes. Scam call not that long ago. Um, I was sitting on the phone for. He was just like. Oh yeah! If you want to get your package, uh, go buy this Visa gift card. I was like, "Oh, we only have Mastercard gift cards." Oh, and then <laughs> it was like I, he's like, "I've never heard of a Mastercard gift card." He's like, "Yeah, let me give you the number right now." Oh, it didn't work. It's like, "Are you sure?" And I just kept giving <laughs> him the number, but the number that I kept giving him, if you actually look the letter, if you look the number to letter up, basically I was going to, I was going to say, "Go f yourself." <laughs> oh, I've done that before. <laughs> Like, yeah, I was like, uh, they said, uh, we got a bunch of your stuff here in Mexico border. Like, there's like drug. it says there's like a bunch of drugs or something. And I was, oh, yeah, well, I need you. To, they said they'll send they'll send me some paperwork. And I was, oh, yeah, I just moved. Here's my new address. It was like 13800. And I spelt it out. I was like, I don't know how to pronounce this. But here I spelled it. And he was like spelling it back to me. He goes, oh, you just he's oh, p hung up on me <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great i love it oh uh, i i do the uh i, I give them uh dallas pd's headquarters I'm like oh, here yeah. just send it there <laughs> we'll meet at the police station well hang on there's i'll be on there TikTok. what's up you know? there's a guy on tiktok who um who who scams the scammers and like gets into the security cameras and stuff? Oh, that dude's awesome! Yeah. I love that oh, guy. Yeah. So he I does a bunch of stuff on like, YouTube as well. I wish I had that level of hacking. Oh, I yeah. wish. Honestly, it's just knowing how to work any desk really, really well. <laughs> like oh, that's yeah. all it really is. Like 
uh, and the renaming file, like, file systems and like making it look like legitimate. Like he uses VMs and it makes it look legitimate and it's all how he does it all. And it's, it's super interesting. Yeah. I was, um, his, his back, his story is pretty fascinating too. Like he's just, he kept getting the scam calls. He's like, the government's not doing anything. I just need to stop this somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he sends packages to him. I'm just like, you know what? If I worked at the call center, I'd quit. <laughs> I'd figure yeah. something else out. Like, <laughs> Is this the I'm same guy that actually, at one point, he hired a team of people to work with him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. 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 It, okay. It's only um, like three, three people to do it. Yeah. it real quick. Since we were talking about figures, I, I'm I'm currently like rearranging stuff. I'm going to build a new shelf soon. Um, I, I I in the preamble I told you guys about how like I'm not a big like McFarlane fan, right. but mm-hmm. I am a big fan of Batman Beyond. Okay. So I did Fair. I did pick up the comic book version of Blight. This figure Ooh. sucks. This figure sucks. But it has one of the best sculpt features on any McFarlane that I've ever experienced. And it's his well-defined ab. Dang. <laughs> Look it's at that dump like, truck. Every other part of this figure is kind of like ass, but like that. His ass. <laughs> whatever sculptor was focused on that and enjoyed their job. <laughs> they really they, you can definitely watch just find out. It's just Nightwing's ass. Like they just repainted Nightwing's ass. <laughs> it's definitely. just Nightwing. It's the same figure over and over and over again. Yeah, you can tell <laughs> that guy was definitely a butt man. <laughs> Glute glutacular. Glutacular. Gluteus Maximus. Enjoy. Oh man, now we're just making up terms. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. Gluteus Maximus <laughs> Maximum Enjoyer. There it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't yeah. know. No, Batman, I just that, I, but I prove. I just rewatched a few episodes of Batman Beyond, and oh, it still holds up. It's still really good. Mm-hmm. It's um that team that the the Bruce Tim team like mm-hmm. knocked it out of the park. I'm mm-hmm. um, I've never I've never not recommended that show to somebody. But I'm also you, a big okay. cyberpunk fan because of that show. Oh, yeah, <gasps> I can cyberpunk twenty can, uh uh cyberpunk uh Edge Runners. Right, you watch that. Yeah, I it. oh, it was it's, great. <laughs> I was mad that it ended. <laughs> it was just a one shot, and it's like you know what? I'm fine with that. Like some stories don't need to continue. Yeah, right. and, um, I I love it when stories know when to end. Yeah, I will say Rebecca. Um, Rebecca was a lot of fun. I love Rebecca. <laughs> everybody does. Uh, have you seen the Jada's uh, Jada toy announce their new figures for that? No, no. Um, but I need to uh, check this out now. <laughs> yeah, J- a... Jada toys. Uh, they're about to make cyberpunk figures and they look awesome. And if you've seen the essay, I'm not the, the essay, the street fighter figures that they have. Yes. Those yes. are great. So I, I'm personally, I'm personally on the wave of there's these figures are going to be great. I'm excited for them. Like I got Chung Lee, Ryu and Ken sitting on shelves and okay. they're just as good as the imports. Like I, for yeah, 20 yeah. bucks, yeah, they're they're awesome, and they have I, good accessories. So Jada Toys actually went a step further, and they reproduced the same figure, but in player two colors. And I absolutely yeah. love that that I that. And then they come in boxes of arcades, arc the old arcades and stuff. Yeah, I wish there there are some figures like there's still those there's still some like franchises that I wish like we would see. Um, a dream of mine is to one day uh, start a Mummies Alive action figure line. Holy moly. I haven't just heard that like, name in a long time. I heard that name in a very long time. Oh my god. Hit a deep cut, right? Yeah, yeah. Holy moly. Do uh this I was all, I was uh, talking to a buddy, we we're both like really into 3D modeling and 3D printing. So I was just like, let's just do this. Like who owns yeah. the rights to this? Yeah. We can start our own can little toy s- company. Yeah. I like just do one, just do one offs and be like, "Hey guys, uh, support small businesses." <laughs> you, could just, yeah. you could just sell the file and not get any kind of legal trouble with that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Like we 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 talked about that too. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why is this file a hundred dollars? Uh, uh, uh no. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. no particular reason. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> reason. Uh, uh, Call yes, it Eagle, Eagle Monkey, uh, um, Eagle Monkey Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like hey, that's a great, that's names. a great third party name. <laughs> oh man! Speaking of franchises, 
uh, brings us to our first topic. Like, so the Power Rangers franchise, as we've seen, has has kind of like stumbled this last month or so, and uh, we we definitely have to touch on this because we haven't had a chance to talk about this yet. But as as we know, the Power Rangers has teamed up with a heritage uh, auction and was basically auctioning off 30 years of Power Rangers suits, props, and um, all that stuff. But not only that, they also included, like, Beetleborgs and, like, one-offs and VR Trooper stuff. And and I was going to ask you, what what's your thoughts on seeing this news? I, everybody else, I, I feel like a part of my childhood is um, being sold off. But mm-hmm. at the same time, there is... There is an adult version of me that is thinking about it as if, well, the franchise hasn't been really doing great. Like right. Toy Cells have been tanking. Uh, the last few TV shows haven't been getting good ratings. Like their deals haven't been strong to the point where you go. Let, let's look at it as this: Neo Saban era Power Rangers did not do what it wanted to do, so they had yeah. to sell it to Hasbro. Mm-hmm. Hasbro didn't get the money that they wanted back on it. Like. I think that I don't think the era of Power Rangers is over. I think it's more about knowing what your fan base wants and still catering to children, teens, and adults. Yes, yeah. I will say the Cat Rangers costumes are on up on the uh, auction site. Oh, the Meow Rangers, the Meow Rangers, <laughs> the Meow Rangers. Yeah, they're yeah. on the auction site. They're, they're on the auction oh. site. Yeah. <laughs> Ah. I was not I was not prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, as you said, it was like I well from what I what I heard was the original guy that was the CEO of Hasbro when he bought Power Rangers, he had an idea for it. And then he passed away and the, the guy that took his spot uh had no interest in the Power Rangers and let it just die out. And yeah, it's a it, it's a it's a proven franchise. I, I think that's yeah. the number one. It's the same thing that happened with Disney. Um, It was supposed to be their boy marketed franchise, but then they bought oh. Marvel. Oh, OK. Hold on. So it's like, I, I, yeah. See what you're saying. So it's like, yeah, when you have a pivot in your in your business, especially at like a massive corporation like that, like I'm not I'm not pro corporate. Like this makes it sound right. very pro corporate. But but it's like when you have a pivot like that. Yeah, you're going to go with the more you're going to go with the longevity brand that's proven to to move weight. Like Marvel has Captain America, Iron Man, Spider Man. Like this, it's a known franchise. Power Rangers is a very risky thing. It is an adaptation of an adaptation. So it's like you're when you're adapting something and you're changing so much, you're it's not even the same thing. I think this would be a great time because you they still own the name and have the rights to start creating American Power Rangers. Yes. Like I think, the, I think the tit- at, at this point, I don't think the titanium suit or the uh, Spirit Rangers are up yet. So I'm just like, it, it, oh. is that a sign of like you know continuing an American tokusatsu? Right, I doubt right. it. But it'd be really nice. Like they could do a whole American branding for it. Um, yeah, it would be interesting they, they did that, but I don't think they will. Like I have no, I, very little faith in Hasbro right now. Yeah, <laughs> like they're oh. they're going for what they can make the money on. It's it's pretty sad though to see thirty years of what we grew up watching just kind of be like put out on the street to the highest bidders and stuff, and knowing knowing that they they might not take care of this stuff, it might just just end up all different places. And like you said before our recording, like I wish there was just some sort of like museum that we could put these things in, and and like they have in Japan, you know, an American um, Power Rangers museum, I think because. Of how dedicated the fan base is, uh, you can move Power Morphicon to the museum. I think that would be a great like mm. incorporation of that. Like it can still hold up branding, and it's a piece of television history. Um, out here where I live in LA, like we do have television museums because okay. of the history of film and television. So I just like, yeah, no, like I'm not trying to like denounce the rest of the country, but it's like, yeah, no, like just put it in LA. Like this is a great attraction for tourists. People already come here from all over to view a lot of this stuff. So, like, another it, big feature. Just go put it in Simi Valley. Just go make a museum yeah. of Simi Valley. It will do super well. It's, like, put it across the street from the uh, the command center, the uh, the Jewish library. The, yeah. Just put it across the street from there. And voila, done. You can see it from... It would sell like hotcakes. Every like, day. It's a pilgrimage for, like, Ranger fans to go there. Yeah. Like... 
every day somebody they're, 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 they're doing the poses they're yeah. shooting videos they're doing toy reviews in front of it it's like there's money being left on the table so to speak right. and there, there's i don't think there was a thought past it than a spreadsheet yeah right. no that's it like, yeah you're right i don't think hasbro even like at this point in time i don't think hasbro even cares about power rangers they want to wow. be done with the set right now until it's like mm-hmm. until they can revive it when they can actually make a profit on it again because um like they, they don't i know it's it's gonna sound horrible they don't give a shit about us at, at all they don't no. like no. They're, they're, they are right now currently in their current project with transformers once transformers dies back down they'll do like gi joe again or they'll do power rangers one of the two like they're not gonna they're not gonna like they're look at what they're doing D. like just look what they're doing D. Oh man, don't even get me started on D and D. It's like, they're like they don't even try. They're just seeing like they're just doing the stuff that makes them money right away. Like there's no long term goals. It's all about what can make a profit right now. Yeah, I I think once they absorbed Wizards of the Coast, it that's mm-hmm. when you started really seeing about how look at a Wizard the acquisition of Wizards of the Coast having the hub. I think it was the hub um, network channel. Yeah, and they had all these franchises, and like it was very geared. Like we have these franchises, we need to make movies and television. It's like, no, you don't. Look at every time. Look at at Magic. You you play Magic at all? I I I used to be heavily involved in Magic. You see all the stuff they're making right now? They're making Marvel Magic cards. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Assassin's Creed Magic cards. Assassin's Creed Magic cards. Doctor Who Magic cards. None of it makes any damn sense. Transformer and, magic cards. They just they did a whole set of Transformer magic cards. I don't see how that works within the lore of Magic the Gathering. And it's like um it's uh, going back to Power Rangers is when they had their uh RPG game, the Oh yeah. The, yeah. I thought that was a great idea and I yeah. would be more interested in I'd be more interested in like a way to homebrew your own D D campaign that is PR themed. Um, yes. I'm currently working on one. Well, there is a friend. way to do it, uh, but, mm, but it's like it's rough. It's 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 a, it's a lot. Yeah, and yeah. like they it's, don't. And I I don't mean to shit on Hasbro, but man, like they've been shitting on us, and I'm I'm really upset about. it. I'm getting tired yeah. of it. Like I want and, to be like I want to be like I want to be excited for the next thing they're coming out with. Like when they made the announcement for the Power Rangers like uh, beat 'em up game, the 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 one that just just oh, released. Yeah. I was not interested at all. I was like, "Cool, yeah." <laughs> they want they want SpongeBob money. I, I um yeah. in oh yeah in animation. There's this term, uh, well, this phrase like, "Is it SpongeBob?" Like that means oh. is it going to be as successful and is it going to hit as hard as SpongeBob did when it debuted? If like you ever think about your favorite like cartoon or franchise dying off too fast, it's like it's being compared to some uh, basically a juggernaut, yeah. like. Every company is trying to catch lightning in a bottle constantly, mm-hmm. and instead of like trying to develop new stories or projects or hear new voices, you know, it's uh, staring into icy cold water. You know, Very. okay. There's a studio yeah. I really, really, really like called A24 that does lets creators do their own projects. And yes, I like, I like them a lot because like they they like I know Hazard Hotel has been getting a lot of crap about some stuff with the the creator and I I get that I understand that but they 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 signed them and let them make their own project they didn't force them to do anything they didn't want to do it was all 100 percent on what she wanted to do for the show and it, it yeah. worked out pretty well the show was really fun <laughs> yeah yeah I so, I thought I enjoyed it when I saw it um. I was talking to a buddy. I don't think that I gotta say this. I it gave me the same energy that uh, Steven Universe did when it came yeah. to like, interacting with fans and stuff. I was like, "Oh, this this means something to you. Like yeah. you you connected to this. You actually and care about the I mean, project you're working on. Positive way possible. Yeah, like yeah. you 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 saw something in this where you could relate to it. And it's like mm-hmm. it's rare when you get like a thing that does that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like just and circling how- back to uh, PR and the heritage thing, like uh, I, we said this before, but we're going to see those suits and a lot of that stuff at, at, at conventions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it's yeah. going to happen. That's the that's the main like I think that's the predominant thing that we're going to see is like you go to a booth and then you're like, oh, it's the Minotaur monster from Zio, or like 
oh, like that's a Cliptor's helmet from this episode. Yeah. You know, you're going to see parts and pieces and stuff. Yeah. And I understand there's a lot, there's a big uh, groundswell of like, give it to the actors. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't. Yeah. I think, but I think it should have been, uh, hey, reach out to everybody in the franchise, yeah. not just the actors, the suit actors, the crew. Hey, we're about to auction off a bunch of this stuff, but oh, we want to offer. Bulk would have bought a bunch of old stuff. Like Bulk would have bought a Dude. bunch of stuff, like hands yeah, down. Yeah. Bulk's goal, like, uh, yeah, no, um, like, like, okay, I don't think they should have been given to the uh, actors, but like, offer them least, first, yeah, or at least yeah. like see if there's a way, like. A museum would have worked out very well because it mm -hmm. was it, it it was a cultural icon through all the nineties. Like nineties, early two thousand you said power just people knew exactly what the hell you're talking about. Doesn't matter. They knew exactly what it was. People were fighting over toys in stores in for yeah. Christmas. Like I didn't get a <laughs> Dragon Megazord until the legacy line. I oh. my entire life I had to wait to be an adult yep. to get a get the toy that I always wanted as a kid. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah, popular that franchise is. Hell, I never got a Dragon Zord to the Lightning Collection. <laughs> yeah. I was so far out of collecting until a couple years back. I was like, "Hey, they're they're making a Zap one. Let me buy one." <laughs> yeah, just to make, like it's just disappointing, and like I, I I don't work at Hasbro. I will never work at Hasbro, and I can't tell you what they're thinking. It just feels like it's right. not. They're not thinking about the fans, like. Isn't Hasbro's like saying like fans first or something like that? Yeah, fans first. Yep. Yeah, I feel like they, they should change their saying. Did you see that they? Okay, so speaking of Hasbro, did you see that they actually released the not released them but like teased the multiple uh, Aslabs coming up? They said it's going to be about almost eleven hundred dollars if you buy all of them. Or for, back for I it. haven't seen all the stuff that came out of New York Comic Con yet. Like oh. the. Last Haslab that I looked at that I was interested in was the Omega Prime like okay. set. Oh. Okay. I actually I actually shilled out for that. I was like, again, the way you can get me to buy anything is like showing me an updated version of something I never had as a kid. Oh, <laughs> like, right, right, right. right. You're, <laughs> like, oh, I, I knew <laughs> I knew uh I knew these two twins who had the uh, R R I D Optimus and Ultra Magnus, and we'd like, go over the house, and they would play with it in front of me, and I was just the most envious child. I was like, "So I, I really so want this." If we gave you updated friends, you would buy them from us. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, there's no, but, uh, you, no. We, we had the same thing. We had, we had this one kid. Uh, it was our godmother's grandson, so something I don't know. like that. But he always had like all the new Power Rangers toys, all of them, every time. We never got anything. Like, because our, you know, our parents are broke. <laughs> so we got a Megazord once, and we got a couple figures here and yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And but he had the entire collection. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, so I we was, feel uh, like we feel that. <laughs> I was fortunate to be a kid who, um, I was the only boy in my family for a long time, so I got all no. boy toys. So okay. for there's a, there's a streak there. I think up until like, I want to say Ninja Storm was when I had like almost all the Megazords. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. Dude, that's I was like, nice. Uh, no, no, they're they're gone. They're gone forever. Uh, Mom said I was too old to a point, and this hawked them. And I was just like, "Oh Damn man, you want to? If you want to, you want to create a therapy session so bad." <laughs> <laughs> if it was my mom, I'd grab her by her shirt. And be like the moment you cough too hard, you're going right to a home. <laughs> He's put you in the home. <laughs> <laughs> the war lady, you're you're gone. You're done but for. You gotta, you gotta talk like you gotta talk like Macho Man, though. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you gotta you gotta put the you gotta put the shining on her. <laughs> oh, Give her please, a razzle dazzle. Okay, so, totally <laughs> off topic, but did you know that there's a con, there's a con Macho Man con or something like that? Macho con. So I macho love con. how <laughs> I love how Macho Man Randy Savage, like the the. Aura. That's, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take a yeah. kid, like the kid, the new kid term. Aura. Yeah. He has, has superseded the man. Now yes, he's, yes. he's fully, a fully a meme, fully a mythical creature. Like he, he's a, um, he's a cryptic now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite scene I've ever seen from Macho Con is when these two Macho Man were talking, and he was like, "Hey, take this Slim Jim." He's like, "Hey, I don't know what that is. I'm from the '80s." <laughs> 
<laughs> my uh, my one of the, one costume or cosplay I've always wanted to do. I never wanted to be Macho Man. I wanted to be Black Muchismo J Lethal. Oh, specifically. Yeah. I, yeah. You guys know TNA. I don't know if you know um, TNA Pro Wrestling, but Jay Lethal is a pro wrestler, and he did a Macho Man Randy Savage gimmick for about two years. Oh, damn. And it was so good. It is so good. And it's very beloved in the wrestling community. He, 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 he sometimes does like conventions and stuff and dresses up as my, uh, Black Mochismo. And I was oh. like, I think, I think it'd be so great to just be at Macho Con, but not be Macho Man, but be the parody of Macho Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I think it would do really, so, really, really well. <laughs> we, we met a wrestler, uh, Ted DiBiase. And let me tell you, that man, just him speaking, was like, like, uh, and f- like we made made us feel small. He was also like seventy, and like still made us yeah. feel like we were gonna get ass whooped. <laughs> Machine Empire got you down. Yeah. yeah. Wondering why Beetleborgs are evil. Yeah. yeah. Cogs everywhere. Yeah. You need Rocky, the Blue Zeo Ranger, the greatest ranger of all time. You can reach him at RockyIsAwesome.com. And if you want a personalized voicemail from the legend himself, make sure you reach out at Voicemail.Rocky.com. Oh okay. So we're talking about uh, wrestling? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm a... What do, what, do the, what do wrestlers call wrestling fans? Marks? Yeah. Mark? I'm, oh. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. I I love it. It's I know I, I never thought of myself as being so into pro wrestling as much as I am right now. Uh, I have a couple of wrestling figs I will happily pull off shelf. Yes, do it. Nope, he's gonna pull the shelf. Right, he's pulling down the shelves. He's pulling down the shelves. Let's do it. <laughs> two 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 of my favorite figures. Um I'm gonna pull out two different lines because now we have two companies that put oh, out right. good figures. Um, right. I'm gonna start off with the AEW figure, the Kenny Omega. Oh, this is not the original figure. So I bought two of them, and I sold like all the other parts. So basically, that's I I bought two expensive figures to make one good figure, right? And, and sold all the parts off. So these are his. Sorry, like cat got insane. These are the type. These are tights he he uh, wore when he won the title, oh. and this is his New Japan jacket. Oh. And that's his uh, New Japan head sculpt that came in their uh, bigger uh, Ultimates, ver- their version of Ultimate Edition. Yeah, 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 yeah that's so, right. So I was like, I want to make an, an Kenny Omega that makes it like he's the like his New Japan run that made it look really cool and really interesting. And I took that, I took the yeah. pants from one, the torso from another, the jacket from another, and the head from another. So it's like two sets in one. Yeah, and you would the mirror other of one, him. Yeah, 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 I wanted, I wanted good version of Kenny Way because like the head that it came with had a uh, the Triple H mustache, the handlebar Lemmy oh. from Motorhead mustache and I was like that looks horrible on you let's <laughs> not do that but this is uh this other figure means a lot to me uh I was I was a really young kid when uh he passed away like uh mm. in 2005 we lost Eddie Guerrero that's right right we lost one of the personally one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time I think that if he was still alive today, he would still be a wrestling. Oh yeah. I think that the character work he hadn't even hit his stride as a performer. No, it's a, a it's a one of those wrestling tragedies that I don't think the fandom has really recovered from, even though it's been like twenty years. No, not at all. It's yeah. like I've never like it's it's very rare, especially in a in a in a sport or entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Where an, a performer is so beloved that they're still talking to them, talking about them in the present tense to this yeah. day. Yeah. I think he would definitely be like a Rey Mysterio, where an uh, obvious Hall of Fame still wrestling. Yeah. 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 It's like, um, it's just, it, it's very clear, like, uh, during that era of pro wrestling, like, the bigger you are, the more you're getting yeah. pushed. The, That's why you saw the, a lot of like big wrestlers back then. Yeah, they Tess, uh, Tess died when he was, I think, thirty three or thirty five. Like, damn, that's young. 
That's crazy young. Eddie yeah. was like 36 when he passed, 36, 38. Right, right. So you got to think about how rough that that era of wrestling yeah. was. And it's like, now there's, there's, there's more stuff I want to talk about, but it's like, this is not a pro wrestling podcast. <laughs> and those those topics have been talked about to death and back. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't want to keep talking about the same five topics that pro wrestlers talk to, pro wrestling fans oh. talk about. I'm right, more right. about like I like I like the artistry of wrestling, like how mm-hmm. every match is basically live action role playing. Yes. Like yeah. like it's so it's so hard to make weekly television but it's also so hard to make weekly live television what other franchise do you know that every episode's new yes that's right days of our lives day yes you're right, you're right. <laughs> so it's it's, it's the wwe and days for our lives they, they talk about aw wwe no the real competitor <laughs> sorry so, it was just I, so, I, I, we're talking about the day <laughs> So we became friends with a guy named Jared. He has a, at the time, it was a wrestling podcast uh, called uh, If You Give a Dad a Podcast. And he talked to indie wrestlers, stuff like So I, when I was listening to it, I would, didn't understand the references. So I started watching uh, Raw and SmackDown on Monday and Fridays to understand the references. And I kind of like dove right into it. So I, I started watching, I guess it was like a couple episodes after Bray Wyatt died. Oh, and that, I've that's been, a... That's that a one hurt. Thing. That's another one that hurt the fan. That one really hurt the fandom. Yeah. I'm not to sidetrack you, but it's just like another guy that connected with the fans in a special way. Even and it's you. like it's it's so hard. I'm I I'm not a pro wrestler. I'm just a fan. But it's like it's so hard for you to be a fan and to connect with somebody, especially when you've watched them from when they first arrived. Yes, yeah. have no character, no nothing, right. and they're figuring it out. And then they made it to the top. Right. And it's just like to 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 see somebody so young pass away like that, because it's it's not just him, it's also uh Brody Lee, who was Luke Harper in the in the Wyatt family with him. Like yeah. that for that that stable was, was nipped down. They lost two people in that stable, which is unheard of, especially yeah. when both seem to be purely freak accidents when when they're passings. Crazy story on that too, yeah. Uh, so like you, like you, I've been watching, right? I've been dove into it, and like when characters come up, and I will like YouTube video them, like you when you show Kenny Omega, I actually went through and started watching like a bunch of his old stuff, and I didn't realize how decorated he is, and not even like wrestle in America for a long time. See, mm-hmm. like New Japan, like the the amazing stuff that Kenny Omega has pulled off, and then when he came back, and he actually had to retire from wrestling. And so, and he still broke my helped. heart. Yeah, broke my heart too. And I was like, I don't even never watch this guy. <laughs> so, and it's always sad. And I've, and like you said, it's a weekly new episode every week. Uh, they, I love how whenever they do live events in other countries, how they do like the Friday, Friday PLE and then Monday in that same country. So they kind of like try to wrap up everything in a weekend in a, in the four day span, and they and it's like that. It's um, pro wrestling is a history of territories, uh-huh. and they always say Vince McMahon got rid of the territories. He didn't. He just redid them because what he did was when used to, when he started traveling for his events, yeah, he would do he would do his his Monday tapings, his Wednesday tapings, and his Friday tapings in the same like vicinity so like the state could yeah. still see their favorite wrestler so to right, be like right. oh yeah we're going to be in new jersey for SummerSlam. everything's like new jersey new york yeah, exactly like the yeah, tri-state yeah. area so yeah. like it's still in that territory like well, it took me a really long time to figure it out because but it just sucks because uh being in los angeles i must say that a lot uh <laughs> we're the butt end of pro wrestling like we're end of year like uh, we don't if it's uh if an event happens at the beginning of the year, that's when all this stuff happens. But typically, it's like towards the end of the year. Oh, so okay, it's like okay. WrestleMania was like probably the best thing to happen to me in my adult life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw so many pro wrestlers. I saw and I, I interacted with so many people. And it was just nice talking to uh, 
people you see on TV, people you see get like really create their craft and be like, I'm yeah. a fan. So, and I'm not a creep. <laughs> like, so Rhea Ripley's entrance to WrestleMania 41 or 40, absolutely. Look, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. How she had Motion and White on there just singing her theme song. Oh, man. Uh, just to keep it within the same realm, uh, Dominic Mysterio's entrance. I watched that live, okay. and my seats were my seats were so bad because I was in the nosebleeds at SoFi. Oh. But I could see from when he arrived with LAPD to when he got to the ring, right. and then I saw like how much he looked like his dad with the mask on. I was like, "There's a there's a story uh, here. Yeah. I can't wait for them to get to it. Like, there's a story. There is a way to turn Dominic Mysterio into a baby face." Yes. And give is. him a mask if that's what he wants to do. And it's just like, he should be the guy that reti- that's going to retire his father. Yeah. That, that should be his story. Like I've been thinking that the same thing. He's the one that has to retire his dad. It, his whole heel turn is not being respected as a man by his father. Yes. yes. That's, that's it. it. That, that's he, the story. He'll respect him when he retires him. Or I, I like think that. the story is when Dominic stands on his own to beat Ray. That's the story. Without live, without Judgment Day. Without any help. He's by himself. Yep. He wrestles his ass off to do it. And I I think he should beat him in the same way a British Bulldog beat Bret Hart. But mm. uh, like it's just just a this uh just a hook over pin and Ray doesn't see it coming. Like I I love wrestling so much that I fantasy book so many like good moments for my own jo- enjoyment. For real, like, for real, yeah. Like I, I uh, was like I, I I from from start to end I'm like I know what would make the fans pop. I know how to end this, and yes. I'm like man, like like you said, I don't think we, I'd be good at booking. I just like <laughs> yeah, like we we know that it's scripted and there's a storyline, and I I know that, but I love how the storyline plays out because we knew Cody was going to win the title. Right, we knew it. How though? Who knows how he was gonna win it? And that's what I love the most is like how just everything played out, and it was so like it, it was like a, a what do they call it a a fan service combination, uh, fan service. I can't remember what they call it, but yeah. So uh, yeah, fan service. Yeah, but I love how it just played out because at ver- you know it was supposed to be Stone Cold that was supposed to choke uh D uh Stone Cold Stunner. Stunner. Yeah. But it the last second he he couldn't do it because the money wasn't right, so they had to get Undertaker, and I just wish Undertaker was dressed in his attire, not like that biker boy stuff. Oh, uh, you mean <laughs> uh, we we instead of getting a podcast taker, we got actual Undertaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> podcast taker. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, I'm I'm not disappointed with how that ended. It was, it's good. Okay. I don't think Cody's a good wrestler. I right. think he's amazing at stories, though. Yes, I will agree. And I think that's the thing that we as fans want more than like a good in ring performer because, like, I will. John Cena is not the best pro wrestler, right? right. Uh, but like, people loved him. Hulk Hogan was never that great. No, no, they but just told stories real well on it. Yeah, they told really good stories. But when I, I personally also think that like. The biggest baby face in the company is also the biggest bad guy in the company. Yeah, because when you really when you really go back and rewatch a lot of that stuff, you're just like, I don't know, Hogan. Like you're not really that good of a guy. Listen <laughs> here, brother. <laughs> yeah. Really. yeah, but yeah. Oh man, I stole a lot of girlfriends back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's no joke. Though it is sad to see him retiring. That la- the up until WrestleMania, uh, forty one, he'll retire after uh, that. I'm going to try to go to Vegas to see that because I desperately would like, again, another pro wrestler I've been watching since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, it was crazy. I remember Red Trunks John Cena coming out. That's how far back I go with Cena. I remember seeing I remember when he was, Yeah. Yeah, I remember when he thought he was black for a minute. I remember <laughs> when I did he was crazy. a Marine. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember all those. Movies. Like, I loved it all. Like, I definitely want to see. I want to see him hang up the jorts and then they go in the Raptors. <laughs> I I just want to see him, every time he comes out. Now I'm just like peacemaker. <laughs> yeah. that, and, that, and that's the crazy thing. It's like uh, when uh, bro, like 
when a franchise casts somebody and they make a character so iconic. Yes. And you never know what character is going to become iconic like that. When exactly. you're when, like, I don't think Peacemaker was supposed to be the breakout star of that franchise. No, no. They, I, no one was expecting yeah. it at all. I don't. And I, it I hit think, like crazy. I, and that's I, I, I would say that's the same thing with uh, Ryan Reynolds Deadpool. That's giving the same energy. It's like nobody oh, yeah. knew that it was going to hit the way that it hit, and it did. And it's just like, how can we bleed this until it doesn't hit anymore? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll do this till you're ninety. <laughs> yeah, until you're ninety. <laughs> it's like so, they man. brought back Robert Downey Jr. We don't yeah. need oh, him. Yeah. Yeah, man, my 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 father in law was like, I don't like Beetle, like I, I don't like Deadpool Wolverine. I was like, no, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> no. Okay, so Deadpool That's... Wolverine was actually really funny to me because I thought it would be Deadpool, but it was Wolverine cussing all the time, and I just love that. <laughs> I think they were like, hey Hugh, we're, we want to bring you back. We're going to give you a, a trillion dollars. We're going to load the truck at, at, up to your house, yeah. and I think his only request was like, I'm just want to swear. <laughs> they say sure go ahead <laughs> yeah do whatever you want like it's an r-rated movie it's, it's gonna be our first r-rated movie and we we, do, yeah. we don't care anymore we've already made a, a gazillion dollars yeah we've yeah. made so much money that we can buy the continent of of california yeah yeah that was a good movie i liked it it it's was like so welcome funny. welcome to the state of disney what i mean yeah. california no disney yeah no as soon as you're here let's it's that's all that's that is that's here yeah you don't, like, even, you don't even have regular dollars anymore. you have disney bucks right Oh yeah, man! So yeah, we're yeah, actually a corporate that. city. Um, we don't have real jobs. It's just an extension of Disneyland. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> what? What do you work? It's, it's like what do you work? H and M, Disney. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> I used to. Um, I used to work in storyboarding, and I didn't know I was basically a subcontractor for Disney until they fired me. What? Yeah. yeah. No. I remember reading my Savage, um, like the they, what is it called when they uh, when they fire you and they give you paperwork? Oh, Savage packages. Yeah, I was reading. Yeah. I didn't get any money. I was reading it and it just said Disney Incorporated. I was like, I worked for Disney. How the like hell? that's going on the resume right now? <laughs> right now. So Damn. Let me update this really quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I worked with this one company that worked for HBO, and because I work for like I work for them, I just, I never put down the name of the company. I just put HBO. For what I did, I did text support for HBO. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> See, I never, I'm, I, I, I like, I think that I'm always afraid that if I do that, they're definitely going to try to check my reference and be like, "Did you really?" <laughs> I, yeah. I just, my anxiety is way too high for that. You yeah. try it, fake it till you make it. You'll be okay. Yeah, yeah for real. Hey, there's a lot of stuff I could put on a resume to be like, hey, yeah, sure, sure, Fox Studios. Uh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, just wear a Mickey Mouse head to the interview, like, uh huh. <laughs> it's like I, I, I should, I should lie more often on my resumes. It's like I just now, um, hopefully, no future employers see this. This is a joke, yeah. but I do, I do, I do embellish a little bit on my resumes. <laughs> if you don't, you I feel like I, I feel for you. If you don't, you should put if, like if you don't have to. Time. I'm impressed. You should put like Bounty Hunter for TVA. <laughs> like Billy on his, he puts down he's a man, he was a manager for uh, Circuit City. They'll never That's know smart. It. That's smart. <laughs> Regional manager. The, I you see that. I going, was, uh, like, assistant man when I was trying to get a um, stock work job, I put out I was an assistant manager at Toys R Us. That makes it. You you are you were. Yeah, no, I, I have a oh, lot yeah. of knowledge on on, <laughs> mm-hmm. on on stocking shelves and inventory. <laughs> Damn! Oh yeah. So yeah, I think we I have the this, boxer, but uh, buddy, we have this little small town out here called uh, Seguin, and it's a it's a big town. But anyways, yeah, there's one Radio Shack still there. I was like, what is this? <laughs> what is this bullshit? Radio Shack. It's what? A, a relic. It's a relic. Yeah, like like by my job, there's a gas station with a a, a payphone, and every time there, I take a picture of it. Look at this. <laughs> It's um, there's this thing called like the eternal flames of the world, like where it's just like a, a spout of gas, and they're just like a little flame in the world, and they're all over the world, like little caverns and stuff, and they're called eternal flames. I think that's basically what like payphones and radio shacks. If you ever what? see one, I, I have the, 
like the uh, like uh, if you see a blockbuster, I think the last blockbuster is closed. Is closed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's an eternal, an eternal flame. And <laughs> I finally <laughs> found one. Like, like the one time I was sitting there and I saw a guy pull up to the payphone and he used it. And I was like, he's a time traveler. <laughs> he don't belong here. He's too far here. in the future. You yeah, went too far, buddy. buddy. Too far. Yeah. <laughs> he's, not, he, he's like, he's, he's like, take me out. Take me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the oh matrix. my God. Like, uh, take me out. Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Jesus. So I see we see that he has got a bunch of figures. What's your preferred uh brand right now? Or your preferred line? Cause we saw like oh, a man. Power Ranger, we saw some uh Transformers. Uh you said you had a couple it's... of Jada Street fi- Street Fighters. It's, this is uh, this is probably my kryptonite. I don't have one. I I know oh, what my least favorites are. I, I definitely know what my least favorites are. Um I'm a, I'm gonna say SH figure arts. I have like if you can see up here. Uh, this is this is Dragon Ball. This is all the Dragon Ball stuff that they that they thrown oh. out. I I never thought I was going to collect that line the way I did until I realized how the the scarcity of that line was. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's it's like yeah, no. Um, I'm top five SH figure arts. I think that they do a great job. I think they've been around long enough and they've improved on the quality of their figures. Sometimes I'm not a big fan of their uh, Bandai Premium system. I literally just ordered the uh, New York Comic Con Vegito because I don't have one in my collection. Looks so I, good, dude. I yeah. was like, my, my buddy sent me the link, and I was like, oh, it's it's bought, dude. I already bought it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, already uh, tired, it's it's already done. <laughs> like, I, SH is definitely going to have to set at number one. Number two. Uh, so there's this third party line for trans for uh, Transformers Beast Wars called Trans Arts. Um, we pull one of them off shelf really quick. Well, lucky that was an arm length reach, but like this guy, oh, straight off the shelf, dude, that looks straight really good. Like, I'm, I, t- I, I touch this guy and get goosebumps. Yeah, like that's how good this figure is to me. Like, it's a beautiful figure. Paint's good. Accessories are good. I like the price points. They're no more than like between 50 to like a hundred bucks, depending on the oh. scaling of it. I, I do think some of them are misses. Like I do, they have a silver bolt coming out that I want, um, that I have on pre-order. They have a bunch of like stuff coming on the line that I definitely like, I'm gonna put a dollar on this, then save my spot. Um, yeah. so it's going to go SA trigger arts, trans arts for number I'm looking, three. I'm looking, at this, I'm looking at silver bolt right now from, uh, from them. And it looks freaking cool. It looks amazing. Like the pace is yeah. silver. He's I actually want, silver. I want all the Bobtos primes. I want the primes. <laughs> I got I got all the primals sitting on shelf right now. I got I got all the Cheetors sitting, which I yes that that I'm kind of hoping once they're done with the uh, with the Beast Wars lines because they're just doing the trans metal figures. I pray that they do the uh, Beast Machine figures. I, yeah, right. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know, like. I, I I think that's a line that desperately needs to come back. <laughs> like, I, yeah. they're ugly, but like, I, there's a way to do it with modern technology. Um, my third one, I'm gonna have to go. Uh, this is so hard. Why did you do this to me? <laughs> you always um, said top five. We only went the top like couple. Like, uh, top okay, I'll just give you three. I'll give my number three. My number three. Let me look around. This is so hard for me. Yeah, my number three, I'm just going to have to go. It was definitely more misses than hits, but the Lightning Collection line. Like, oh, yeah, definitely. It's like, I'm heartbroken. I didn't so, get a Delta Vega ship. For real? Heartbroken. Yeah. So go, okay, we get, we get Mighty Morphin, and we get Dino Megazord. Then we get Astro Megazord. So Delta Megazord. It would make total sense. And a white tiger that they leaked, you know. And dude, and it's like, okay, so you're clearly book. You're doing a bookend, so you're going to fill that in. That'd be super great. But finish in space. Give me a Delta Megazord. Give me a Mega Winger, and I want everything in scale. Yes. So I can put it on shelf. I would love yep. to have a set of the 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 in space Megazords just updated. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I they're 
I have the Astro Mega ship. I love it. Like, mm -hmm. it's one of those things. Like, I don't know if you guys do this, but there are figures in my collection that, like, sometimes I'll just look at it and I'm like, I'm going to kind of mess around with that. It's like not playing, but like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tinker with it. I'm going to transform it. If it transform, I'm going to pose it if it poses. Like, I'm and not going to make all the noises. Guy. You make all the noises, right? You're like, Please tell us you make all the noises. Ching, ching, yeah. yeah. Right. You, and then you, you play the theme the song while you're doing it, right? I, I'm, I'm, I do. I sing. I sing the song. I do the whooshing noises. I do the pew pews. Like there you go. Yeah. No, we do the same thing. You're fine. You make <laughs> us no. so proud right now. <laughs> I, I think right now I'm an art teacher. I think it's very important for adults to connect with their childhood and remember what it was like being a child. I think that adults get caught up in like what's childish, what's maturity. I don't think there's a really a template for it. It's like, it's about what makes you happy and showing kids that like you are safe to be around. It's okay. Life gets better. And it's like, not everybody has that adult in their life that they can look to and be like, I want to be like this person when I grow up, or I want to be comfortable around this person. And it's, it, that's yeah. really important. And it's when, when I'm teaching, I try to be, as open and available as possible to my students. And main, the first thing I tell them is like, yeah, dude, I still collect action figures. And that blows their mind because I'm an adult. And they're yeah, like, yeah. Wait, wait, Mr. DJ likes to play with, you know, Power Rangers and anime figures. Like, I don't really play with them. I kind of just keep them on shelves. Some of them are still in the boxes. But yeah, no, dude, like, they're cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get like, real cool. Don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is, you know, like, some of them aren't that great. <laughs> So yeah. I wasted 20 bucks on this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad spinning habits. Man, I feel that. I, I do that too. Whenever I meet new people, I usually, first thing I say is like, hey, I toy collect. So if you see my workspace has Funkos or action figures, mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my, um, so, my old uh, apartment, I used to have a walkway. And in mm -hmm. that walkway, I used to have my action figure shelves. So it'd be the first thing you, when you walk in, I have guests over. You will oh. have like a, a like a eyesight view of like my I it goes from like the cheaper stuff. So it'd be like, oh, you walk in, there's a bunch of like Spider Man from oh, Mar Marvel right. Legends, like right there. But then you walk in, it's a higher end stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, dude, I remember Big Bad Beetleborgs. I remember this, and it's like, yeah, because sure. it's like yeah. I'm meeting new people, and I invited you into my home. It's like, yeah, let's break the ice because I hate small talk. Yeah, I hate uh -huh. like. How's the weather? It's like, dude, we, I don't know, like, fine. <laughs> Let's talk yeah, about yeah, something yeah. that we can relate to and have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah you guys got, that. like, the uh, winter storm pretty bad out there, huh? Oh, it's oh, horrible. So yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, bad. So, so that was, bad. I will tell you, that's the first time in my life that I've ever had to dig my car out of snow. That, dig. and your whole infrastructure is not built for that. I, that's no. crazy. Not at all. Luckily, yeah, no. though, where we were, we still had water and power till the power, the water plant lost power. So we only had water without water for one, like one day. Yeah. But yeah, it that's was literally, the, uh, it was four storm. winters, four storms in a week. That's what, yeah, that's what messed crazy, up. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. I'm, uh, I've been telling my friends to uh, get prepared in California because we've been having a lot of mini earthquakes. Like a lot um, of point fives. I've seen like, that. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's like it's, it's a lot of it's scary. It's scary. Mm -hmm. Like because you when you're a kid, <laughs> well, when, it, when you're a kid out here, the first thing you learn about is the fault line. Right. Yeah. Like right, that's right. the first thing you learn about. It's like, hey, one day from Washington State all the way down to Mexico, we're just gonna break apart from the from the country. We don't know oh. when it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. This is going to so, be a disaster that so, we are never going to be truly prepared for. My <laughs> question for you, really quick. I'm sorry, I got to ask. So, whenever you guys have the mini earthquakes, does any of your figures fall over? So, the last <laughs> one we had, um, nothing really fell over. What? But which is crazy because, like, I just built this shelf. Like, I like I'm fully into my woodworking phase where I'm just crafting everything. I built a new shelf from scratch, and I was like really worried that it wasn't going to hold up. I came back and nothing fell down. But the one after that, like 10 figures, but they're all like 
it was all the lightning collection stuff. I was like, oh, oh. so I'm, now I know who's stable. And it was like <laughs> Japanese imports, bootleg, Fun. everything stood. stood. <laughs> so that, 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 just, that just means that your posability is elite. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's like, um, hey, I'm also, I'm also a big proponent of uh, buying, like I said before, I'm big into bootlegs, but also like, if you want cheap like action figure effects Al- aliexpress yeah like i've heard that's where yeah. i get all my stuff from like from the action figure stands to the effect parts like i'm not i'm not knocking the brand but uh tamashi nation i'm not i'm not paying you 40 dollars for action figure effects right right now I, hasbro I, I will pay you 40 bucks for action figure effects oh yeah Hey, I tell you what though, Hasbro knocked it out of the park with that uh, that uh, Ghostbusters Haslab. I kind of oh, really, yeah. kind of really want it. I kind of want it because you could change change out the parts on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm currently hunting for that Knight Rider uh, figure. No, oh, that Knight Rider Transformer. I was like, yeah, no, it's because uh, the last few crossovers, I will say this: the X Men one I thought was the worst looking robot design, but great vehicle design. The, right. I wasn't into the Ghostbusters one. I'm not. I'm a '90s kid, so I I miss Ghostbusters by literally a couple of years. Um, right. I wasn't a fan of that one. The, I think there was an A Team one that they announced, and I'm trying to figure out like they should. It should look like Mr. T, right? Like, oh no, <laughs> they they will look like Mr. T. That okay. I kind of hope that's what that happens. Then, but they they announced a Naruto one, and I saw that. Yeah, I pre-ordered it. I was like. This this appeals to me in a weird way that I didn't I never thought about because growing so, up I was a fan but I'm not I, I was one of those fandoms I grew out of right huh. but I was like yeah, oh that. yeah no definitely I'm gonna buy these like it looked interesting I'm never though. taking it out of the package so the Knight Rider Transformer uh, figure by the way is on Day by Toy Store if is it like, up? yeah yeah it's up well, it's not for sale it's on pre order oh okay okay but still there I'm, I mean if you get it you can get it. There's a I have a I have a toy spot out here. Um, shout out to Toys in a Box that is, they are oh. the most premium like um, action figure place out here. There's a couple I other places know of them. Yeah, I, they're, I, I've they're, seen they're, them. They're great. They're great. Like, and they're only reason why I gush about them is that they're 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 doing MSRP. Oh, oh, they're yeah, selling you don't see MSRP. A lot of... Yeah, they have. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've gotten figures that I never like. Uh, what did I get there? I got the uh, Marvel Legends Tombstone for actual price. Oh. I didn't have to pay overpriced for it. Like typically, Damn. in other places, it's like ten dollars on top of it. Yeah, I went to a toy store and they were selling um, Spider Man for like forty bucks, and I was like, "That's nah, twenty two dollars at most, bro." <laughs> yeah, we we have a place out here called a Toy Dojo, and it's like, but they're oh, they're man. not they're not ten dollars. They're like. 40 over price yeah. and i just i can't ever yeah. buy anything there there's a place over here called madness they're about five bucks over uh over regular price uh but unless it goes on sale then like half of everything else like i bought a, a bunch yeah. of ava stuff from them for like nothing uh because it was on, it was on sale it was like 90 percent off happened to you guys where you're at it's like now that the lightning collection is like you know dead have you guys seen like a crazy tick up in those prices Oh yeah, um, a oh, yeah. couple little things, but um, I'm really excited. But, so, like, one of the places I go to has had Super Seven stuff, all the Super Seven Power Rangers stuff for half off, uh, and so I picked up a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just I want to pick up the, their Goldar. That's all the only figure I want out of that mm-hmm. line. Oh yeah, uh, though Lightning Collection, I don't see them in stores anymore. I don't even see them at like the toy stores. Nothing. Uh, out here. Uh, Ross, I got the uh, Turbo Red Ranger, which is uh, the T with the TJ head. Yeah, I can't even find um, those. <laughs> uh, I I bought an extra one for my friend, and I would happily offer it to you if it was going to somebody else's home. Like, oh, okay, all right. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. If I come across it, like I'm gonna definitely hit you up. And then the Lightspeed Rescue Blue Ranger, which is like, uh, uh, talking to people about it, it's like they just wanted. We just wanted complete teams. Like I'm definitely right. on that boat. But I wish, I wish that, uh, I wish that line did it in waves the same way, uh, they did Marvel Legends, where yes. like you can get more than one team member in a wave. 
Yeah, yeah. So that way, you, so that way, by the next wave, you're all now. Uh, as you're collecting West Coast Avengers. You're getting one in each wave that's coming. Yes. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish they did that too. Yeah. But it was just like, oh, we have a new line. Immediately, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah. Like, Throw this at you. This, this is what you want, right? This is, this yeah. is the one. And it's like, what if you're what if you're a Lightspeed Rescue fan? What if you're? Uh, they never did Jungle Fury. That, they never did. They, they barely they barely did SPD. I don't think we got an SPD Red Ranger out of that. Uh uh-uh. uh Oh, SPD Red. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like also, it's like uh, we never got Battleizers. Never. I would totally. So, like, uh, you could buy packs in uh for Fortnite from Hasbro, like battle mm-hmm. packs and stuff. I would have bought a. I would have bought uh armor packs, you know, or upgrade yeah. packs. Yeah. Like it's like oh, it's like you either do a specialty one where it comes with a unique version of the Red Ranger figure, or yeah. a pack that's like you could just snap on the armor pits for the yeah. already existing figure. Because exactly. it's like. I, I have Andros. I have the red rain. I have the red and space right up here. I'm just like, it would be really cool to be able to pose him as the as the battleizer for him. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I I got a. You get the you got the uh, blue ranger with his with his glider, and you got the silver ranger with his motorcycle. But I'm like, there's so much more in that show that you guys could have made toys out of. Exactly. Exactly. I was yeah. like, and like we were talking about before, it just felt like Hasbro was like. We really don't care. <laughs> yeah, we never cared. Yeah, yeah. But here's here's the uh, seventh variation of Mighty Morphin that's remastered <laughs> with flame effects. With flame effects, nobody wanted them. <laughs> no, dude. Uh, oh, you. Uh, hey, we we saw that you guys didn't buy those. We're gonna we're gonna throw these on sale. But we got a new announcement for toys: metallic armor Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So now they're shiny. That's like, yeah. yeah. Please... <laughs> I want it. I was like, can uh, I get a Titanium Ranger? Please. <laughs> like, yeah. Can I get anything else but for MMPR? Nope. MMPR. Can I get some okay. like? Can I get some Samurai Rangers? Can I get? No. Can I have like a whole shelf just full of like the extra and six Rangers like I really want? Yep. Can I yep. get a black M- uh, RPM Ranger? Like, can I get the green RPM Ranger? Please, please. <laughs> I need Ziggy in my life. <laughs> can I can can I get like any can I get Divatox as an action figure? For real. <laughs> we need some Elgar. We got a strong can I we got can I get astronomy. a Lothar? Can I get a damn Lothar, please? I want Lothar. Man, can we get Ninja Storm anything? <laughs> anything, <laughs> Ninja Storm? Some Cam? Some oh, what's the Yeti's name from uh, Operation Overdrive? You know, you guys can, any... can we get Operation Overdrive? <laughs> anything from Operation Overdrive? <laughs> yeah, can we yeah. get can we get just a pack? Because they gave us Alien Rangers, right? right Which I thought was right. pretty cool. Uh, that that kit was at a hundred bucks when it came out. Now it's like thirty five dollars for the whole set. Yep. Oh, jeez. That's right. It was like a hundred bucks, and it's just the price just kept tanking because nobody wanted it. And it's yep. like you, it's like I don't know what the R and D is. I don't know what the uh, pipeline is, but it's just like you know, if you just do a fan poll every now and then, you'll know you know exactly what to make next. You'll know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'll know. But they didn't. They yeah. didn't do nothing like that. No. It's, it, there was no there's no fan appreciation. There's no uh and okay. then when they did when they when they did their um announcements, it was like, Oh yeah, we got like fifty Transformers out and now we're gonna talk about Power Rangers. There'll be a pink one and maybe a blue one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's usually how it went. Hated it. It's it's a, it, it was a sad time. Like I got weird merch. I got this NSX Honda mm-hmm. that's the Green Ranger decal. And I'm like, do you know what would have been cooler than this? A Transformers Power Ranger crossover. That would have been, that was apparently supposed to be in the in the lines. There was like, a comic for it, but that's about oh, it. Well, yeah. So it could have happened. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Like, it's, it's Dinobots, right? That right. turn into the Megazord. Like, like, like flame toy style, yeah. Like so, it's yeah. like you you just take the you just take if you're going to keep rehashing MMRP, you just take the Megazord and then you just make them Transformers and you just make the Tyrannosaurus Rex Optimus Prime, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that'd be it. You just, you just combine it together and then you make Megatron the Dragon Zord. Yeah, you're onto something. See? We I'm must saying, protect. I'm, we must protect this man at all costs. <laughs> I'm full of great <laughs> ideas, Hasbro. If you're listening, hire me to replace whoever isn't making good decisions. 
Watch you find you dead tomorrow. Like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Body floating in the LA River. We're, yeah. we're currently in a drought, so, like, yeah, it's just me. It's, just, it's gonna be, like, on the concrete <laughs> and the uh, the storm drain, the, the LA storm drain, <laughs> just on the concrete. Like, yeah. well, alright then. <laughs> uh, all right. Interesting fact, every time it rains here and the river is full up, you can see uh, all the stolen vehicles just, like, floating away. Oh, dear God. <laughs> it's, it's the funniest thing. Yep. Oh, oh my gosh! Mafex is making a twenty uh, Spider Man twenty ninety nine uh, comic version. Okay, oh. cool. All right. Do you I guys collect like, Mafex? I, I, I do some that. stuff. Uh, this stuff I, is I interesting. Like it's, it's not bad. Like it's not bad. It's actually really high quality stuff, but it feels like the boxes are meh, and yeah. like some stuff is kind of questionable. But for the most part, they're really high quality stuff. I just think the prices they went from are a little outrageous. Like, sometimes it's like $80, sometimes it's $150. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, if you give me a Spider-Man, like, an ultimate Spider-Man, like, uh, the, uh, a limited Spider-Man, the one, the TV show one, I would buy that right now. Oh, in a heartbeat. Like, um, oh, yeah. the theming for my collection is Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well... Um, thanks everybody for listening to this episode of Zero to Hero with Billy, Jim, and DJ, uh, DJ, or as everybody calls him, hyped villain. Uh, thanks again for uh, hanging out with us tonight, talking wrestling, action figures, uh, possible higher uh, employment at Hasbro. So <laughs> your former employment with Disney, you know, yeah, 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 just all kinds of stuff. This was great. I enjoyed coming on. Um, Definitely can't wait to see how this this works out. I if you guys ever want to have me back on, just let me know. I'm totally down. This is really fun. Oh yeah, definitely. I could definitely talk wrestling a lot more too. So wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. wrestling. So uh, before before we get off of here, uh, plug yourself. See, uh, let everyone want to know. Plug where they can Jesus, them. <laughs> plug them up. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you want to follow what I do on the internet, I have a YouTube. I have a TikTok. I have an Instagram. It's hyped villain, hyped. That's with an E D in the middle, and then the villain. If you want to see what I've collected and want to hear me rant about being in LA traffic, if you want to hear me just talk about random things. Follow me on one of those three things. Hyped villain on everything. All right, and then you can definitely <laughs> find us at Zio. You can always find us at Zio to Hero across every social platform out there. Uh, I'd stop making TikToks because it's just so disheartening now to like only a hundred people see my stuff. <laughs> it's hard. Shadow band, shadow yeah. band, shadow band. They know I'm a part of the Illuminati or Illuminati, whatever. Because you got to <laughs> throw up the the Jay Z eye. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. God dang it! <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, let them know. Well, enjoy uh, enjoy this episode. Until next time. <laughs> I tried to do the skill. Never what? mind. All right, guys. Do you want to be a hero, but you're not? Do you want to be a Jiro or a Kojiro, but you can't because you're not Japanese? Have you considered Zio to hero? Remember, heroes come and go. Idiots are for <laughs> Jubilee! Jubilee! About five minutes of pe- preamble, so I could throw something funny at the back end of it and stuff. So, I think got- I I think that uh, PR nerds are getting way too hung up on this this auction. Mm-hmm, I, mean, mm-hmm. I really do think like yeah. we're definitely going to see them at conventions, right? Oh yeah, they're- oh yeah, no, we're we're going to see them, and it's going to be attached to people who are real snooty ass little shits. It's going to uh. be really annoying, like. This could be like one or two people who got the suits who are gonna be really cool about it. Like, all right, yeah. The rest of them, they're gonna know the hell out of everyone. It's uh, like the guy yeah. who sells three legacy Titanuses at his booth, but none of them are for sale. Yeah, yeah. Ain't that damn? I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or he's just like, oh yeah. Hey, how much for that one particular rare item that I'm willing to pay for? Oh, it's not for sale. Then no. Why is it why on do you have why, why is it here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Take it yeah. home, damn it. Take it home. Is this not a place to buy stuff? Like, <laughs> I have money. Is my money not real enough? 
just confused and hurt. <laughs> it's because yeah. it's because of why I ate it, <laughs> dude. Oh my god. <laughs> This is the Zio to Hero podcast.